my guys, I can't believe January is already over. I decided to try something new and do this month's review in chronological order. But I'll still be giving each one a grade out of 10 so that we can discuss who is the best and who is the worst at the end. It was surprising because some of the best and worst releases came all the way at the end of the month. I definitely did not expect that, so you will have to see. Remember to be respectful and nice and all that, and comment your opinions on your favorite releases down below. We got some great releases this month, and some not so great ones, so without further ado, let's get started. I stayed up until like 3 a.m. to see what this would be like, and I'm sorry to say I was sorely disappointed. You all know I'm the biggest Revel of, and I'm also a fan of Espa. So when this whole project was announced, I literally screamed. Like I screamed, I looked at my phone and I screamed. And then I threw my phone across the room because this was what I had wanted for like years, ever since Super M debuted. And I could not believe SM actually got their act together and made it happen. But then I saw this and I was just like, this is not it, I'm sorry. Before we even talk about the terrible lyrics, why is the song itself so messy? At first, I thought the Gregorian chanting in the background was a cool and unique idea, but by the middle of the song, I got tired of it. It felt like it was overpowering the vocals, especially in the chorus where the vocals are supposed to be coming through. And I didn't like the dance break either, which got even worse when they decided to start yelling, step back, step back, step back, silly girl. And that brings me to the topic of the lyrics. For those that are unaware, this song is about a woman wanting another woman to step back from her man. The lyrics call the other woman a silly girl and blame women for men being sad. And then also they blame women for men like drinking, like I just, I don't get it. It's really demeaning and it pits women against each other, which is the exact opposite of the woman empowering thing they were supposed to go for. Why call your group girls on top and then proceed to put down other women in favor of a man? It's like your specific girls are on top, but then other girls are below and like men are somehow higher than all the girls? SM had kindly put an English translation of the video when it was in their livestream concert and I was reading it and the further I got into the song, the less I liked it. It's truly ironic that they performed this right after Boa performed Woman, a song about woman empowerment and being yourself. The lyrics of this song were like exactly the opposite of that, and I just, I expect more. It's, it's 2022, can we please get our act together? The only thing that saved this song at all is the people that were in it. It is truly a travesty that all we got out of them is a performance video, once again showing SM really does not give a crap about their girl groups. The public reaction when this was announced should have hinted to SM that they should maybe do more. But why do that when you can overwork NCT for like the 20th time? Okay, that was, for legal purposes, that was a joke. And I know that even the members of Girls on Top are not that interested in it, but it's obvious when you compare the Girls on Top stuff to SM's other projects like Super M that this was never a priority. Overall, I'm giving this a 2 out of 10, and that's just because I liked watching the performance when it was on mute. Thank you to the members for trying their hardest with the crap that they were given. Hopefully when SM tries this again, because you just know they will, they can improve upon what we have here. This debut is the first major debut I've seen in a while that really felt like a debut. What do I mean by this? Well, it was a little rough around the edges, but overall I did like it. I really like the opening part with shouting, and also Dion's bridge rapping part was fun. I think they should have leaned more into the fast-paced rap parts that were in the part of the song and done that instead of the weird chanting in the second part of the chorus. It felt like they were trying to balance between the members of the group who are better at each concept, so like, they gave Dion the rap parts, but then they had the rest of them singing like, oh, whoa. So because of that, it felt like a bit of a mismatch. Also, whoever their choreographer is needs to be fired right now. Who thought it was a good idea for Eugen and Dion to literally walk off in the middle of the first chorus? 
And why give the members with ad-libs a different choreo than the rest, making them look like they don't know what they're doing? And most importantly, why do they look like they are going to eat a flying hamburger for literally half the song? I have so many questions. In the end, I'm happy this group debuted, especially that Yujin is getting another chance. I wouldn't listen to Wa Da Da if it came on shuffle, but I can see what they were trying to go for, so I'll give them a 6 out of 10. I think they can only go up from here, so I'm excited to see what they come up with next. I was pleasantly surprised about this. It's just the right mix of emotional and upbeat. At first, I thought this was going to be another snooze ballad with a boring concept, but as the song went on, they really proved me wrong. Like with Kepler, the rap parts in the song were my favorites, but I like the chorus well enough. I think I would like the instrumental more if there weren't any vocals on it, to be honest, but that is impossible, so I like what they did do. The concept and everything else here is nothing special, in fact I'm pretty sure I've seen everything in this music video elsewhere. This same concept also appeared later in the month, I'll, I'll tell you about that. But I also think that they don't have that much money, so they're making the best of what they've got. I liked this comeback more than I expected to. I do actually have an up tension. Oh, I hope that's how you pronounce it. Up tension? Okay, anyways. I do have a song from them on my playlist, which is Your Gravity. And literally, Your Gravity is the best song ever, but this song comes nowhere close to that. But then again, all their fans probably liked it, so I'll give them a 6.5 out of 10 and hopefully they can make some money from this and then release another song like Your Gravity. Your Gravity is such a banger. Oh my god. I made the mistake of thinking that Woozy was Hoshi and then thinking that this was a great improvement from Spider, but no, this is a different Seventeen member. And wow, if this was his debut, then kudos to him. This song made me feel like I'm a secret agent that also has dancing superpowers. Woozy is he's mysterious, he's cool, I like the fashion, and the music is good. The one thing I would change is put more of the instrumental with the guitars after each chorus, because I would have loved to hear more of that. In the one part where they did highlight the instrumental, they put some weird modified vocals over it, and that kind of ruined it. So I would remove that specific vocal part. It's interesting to me as 17 members go solo because there's just so many of them that I was not sure if they would be able to distinguish themselves from each other. But based on what I've been seeing, they aren't doing too bad. Ruby is my favorite 17 solo of the ones I've seen, granted I've only seen like two, but we're working on it, and I'll give Ruby an 8 out of 10. Also, I know Seventeen is largely self-producing, so if Woozy had some hand in producing this himself, then I'm even more impressed. This is the best song they've made so far, and I wish they had been doing this the whole time instead of releasing stuff like Purple. This actually reminds me of my second favorite song from them, which is I Don't Miss You. Neither song is too loud, they have a cute concept, and generally, they're a relaxing listen. The instrumental isn't too loud, and there are no loud drops. It really feels like a twinkly song, which is fitting considering the title. I added it to my playlist as soon as I heard it. The song itself isn't really unique, which might be why they held off on doing concepts like this before, but in this day and age, a school or a cute concept is no less common than the teen crush concept they had before, so I wish they had released this a year or so ago. I was actually worried their company was running out of money because they didn't have like a physical album release for this comeback, but the music video and stages are all pretty high production value, so that was nice to see. This gets a 7.5 out of 10. I think everyone should go stream so that they can afford their next comeback. I knew the second this song started playing that it would be one of my favorite songs this month. Every single thing about this is perfect, from the concept, to the song, to Dayong's facial expressions, because oh my god, have you seen her stages? 
She is having so much fun with this. Like, it's so campy. I'm literally obsessed. Her and the other members really conveyed the concept of the song in their vocals, especially in Subin's second verse and Dayong's bridge. The bridge part with Dayong just talking is so unique, but it still fits so well. Like, how? She's literally from a movie or something. I can't get enough of it. This entire comeback fits so well together. Like, whoever is in charge of planning the outfits and stuff needs to be given an award. And the song itself is so much fun, you can't help but bop to it. Even the instrumental in the second part of the chorus absolutely slays, and normally I don't like that kind of thing. <laughs> I learned the entire chorus choreo right away because it's pretty easy, and this is the type of song that you can't help but dance to the moment you hear it. If they do another comeback like this, I will have to add them to my stand list because this, in combination with their debut, is pure gold. This is a 10 out of 10 without question, 100%. I just love it that much. Everyone should go listen to this right now. Stan Chocome. <laughs> I know it's part of their concept, but whoever keeps giving and hyping these songs with the hyphenated titles is just wrong, okay? I didn't realize they came back because I mixed up Blessed Cursed with their last song, I think it was like Tamed Dashed, and that was unfortunate because I've been pretty interested in them ever since Drunk Dazed. Drunk Dazed was an amazing song, but I'm not really sure if this is living up to that. It's just kind of there, like it's not bad, and I was definitely getting into the groove when I was listening to it, but I felt kind of obligated. Like, it's, it was like they wanted me to dance along. The chorus especially is just rough. Like, I don't want to hear you chant about being a lion or whatever was going on there. When the song finished, I was like, that's it? I thought they were going to do something different in the last chorus. I don't know, change it up. But we just didn't get that. In the end, I can see why someone would like this comeback, but nothing about it really stood out to me. The concept wasn't anything special either, and that makes me a little sad, because I was quite interested in this group at first. But based on what I've seen so far, they do have the potential to come up with something great next, so I'm still excited. Experimenting with each release does make for a more interesting discography later, so Maybe that's what they're going for. Like, that's my hope. I'll give this one a 4 out of 10, because it wasn't like the worst thing ever, but it also didn't really do anything for me. I'm not sure if I can explain why I enjoyed this, because a lot of the stuff here isn't my favorite when it's put in other songs. But I think the turning point was the chorus, because I was absolutely sure they were going to do an empty chorus with a drop, but they didn't. Those vocals were such a good surprise, and I was much more into the song afterwards. The instrumental at the beginning did remind me of some AB6 and 101 songs that I do like. There is a bit of a mismatch between the chorus and the second verse especially, but it might just be that different guys are singing those parts. They did do more of a drop in the bridge, and that was my least favorite part, but that was over quickly. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised by this, and I think I'll check out some of their other stuff. This gets an 8 out of 10, not because of the song itself or anything, but I was just, I felt surprised that this song came from a group that I didn't know much about before. Definitely gonna check them out. Are you ready for love like this? Are you ready for love like this? Are you ready for yummy, yummy, yummy? This is so meh, but honestly, it's better than the last few things they came out with, so I'll take it. This is such a confusing song and concept, and I just don't get what they're trying to go for here. I don't really like how the song immediately starts with the chorus, which is not a criticism specific to Momoland, I just don't like those types of songs in general. And the fact that the lyrics are all in English means that I can get mad about them too, because what exactly do the lyrics, you make me try, mean? Like, are they trying to look good? Are they trying to be friendly? Like, it's not like they elaborate. I'm surprised they got someone to feature on this, but I'll be honest, I don't know much about Natty Natasha, so I'm not sure how much she added to this song. 
They cover her parts on music shows, and it sounds exactly the same anyways, so I was wondering what the point of having her there was. But if she'll make them more famous, then it makes sense. To be honest, they kinda need it. I feel like they've been going downhill for the past few years, and it's kind of sad. Their music is forgettable at best, and annoying at its worst, and this song is pretty middling, so I'll give it a 3 out of 10. I don't have much hope for them in the future, I'll just listen to Freeze on repeat and feel very very sad about it. This was exactly what I expected her to do, but that doesn't mean it's bad. I will say I would never listen to this on my own, because if you know me, you know I'm not really a ballad type of person. But this did pick up a bit in the chorus, and once again came with an instrumental I would rather listen to by itself than with the vocals. So props to her for coming out with that, because I did prefer the instrumental to this song to the one from her solo debut, Watercolor. In terms of the vocals and the concept, I did prefer Watercolor though. This song just felt a bit slow, not in like a boring way, but just slow. In the end, I'm happy that Wein has gone out of RBW and is making the kind of music she wants on her own schedule. Even though I didn't like it that much, there's definitely an audience for it. And if you like ballads and chill stuff in general, I do recommend checking her out. This one gets a 5 out of 10, but I don't think it was that terrible, it's just not for me. From the second I saw the teasers for this, I was hooked. Watching the various Eyes One members debut is so exciting because I have no idea what they're going to come out with. So I was delighted to see that Yena was trying something different from the solo debuts that have come out so far. And I have to say, out of the solo debuts, this one by far is my favorite. The 2000s inspired chorus and chanting and everything is just so good. I listen to it and I have to chant along with her, it feels like she's cheering me along. It all fits so well together, like I was afraid the part we heard in the teasers was going to be better than the rest of the song, but nope, all of it was amazing. I also like that BB was on this, I feel like she's just been everywhere lately and that's great for her. The fact that they incorporated her into the storyline of the music video was fun too. The music video itself is so cute, there's a storyline, which I feel like is getting rarer these days, and the animations were enjoyable. I feel like the whole concept of this release really added to it, and I much prefer to listen to it while watching a stage. Also, shout out to the b-sides Look To You and Pretty Boys, because she really went off with those. It feels like it's rare to debut with a whole mini album these days, so that was awesome. I listened to it multiple times from start to finish, and it was overall a great mini. I originally wanted Yana to be added to Everglow, but seeing what she's coming out with now, I'm glad that they chose to have her go solo. This is definitely a 9 out of 10 for me. Best release so far? No, not, not including WJSN, but very close to being a 10 out of 10. If this is what she's making for her debut, I'm so excited to see what she'll do next. When this song started, I was like, okay, this isn't that good, but it's not that bad either. Then the chorus started, and I decided that, no, nope, it's just bad. The rap in the second verse helped confirm that too. This song feels like it's going somewhere, and they just throw that out the window, chanting about how they have the power, and repeating that they're a villain, like, ten times. We get it, you're a villain, you can shut up now. I will say though, whoever was doing the ad-libs in the last chorus was absolutely popping off with the vocals. I think an amazing concept might have saved this release, but the concept that they did have was super boring. I feel like this had potential, like, there's a good song hiding in here somewhere if they redid the chorus, but unfortunately, the producers could just not make it come out. This gets a 3 out of 10. Overall, if you're a fan, I don't blame you, but also, I would never let this song within 6 feet of my playlist. Okay, this is absolutely gonna get me flamed, but I do not care. Why is there so much hype for this song? Like, okay, it's a fine song, maybe it's even a good song, but 
This is nowhere near the best song Promise 9 has ever had, nor is it the best comeback they've ever had. At this point, I think Flovers are still scarred from their multiple year-long hiatuses because they'll eat up anything. This song sounds a lot like Talk and Talk, but Talk and Talk executed this exact concept and sounds just a little better. Talk and Talk had, how do I say this? They had a vision for what was going to happen there. And whether you liked it or not, at least they tried. But DM feels like Fromis is trying to make everyone happy without a defined goal. That being said, this is not terrible, and it does fit with the rest of Fromis's discography. The vocals on here felt much like a clear stream and they were washing over me, which I quite liked. Unlike some of the other songs in this video, the vocals complement the instrumental quite well, and I did like the intro instrumental part as well. This isn't bad, it's just that I think it's a little overhyped, considering the absolute gold Fromis has put out in the past. It's a 7 out of 10 for me, like I said, not terrible, it might be playlist worthy depending on the day. This is such a fun take on the quarantine concept, which usually involves people singing about the person they love from afar, or maybe through Zoom, but this was just two friends missing each other, but then having fun, and eventually getting together at the end. Not not together in the way you might be thinking, but they, they hang out at the end. Of course, they party outdoors as one should in these times, and you can feel the fun coming through the screen. The music video is essential to the experience, I think, because there are a lot of effects, like the marching chant they added in the middle, that only really work if you have visuals to go along with the song. The song itself is not my favorite, but I watched some stages anyway because their performance is what makes this good. I did like their vocals, especially in the rap parts where they added a little attitude in there. And the fact that they sang live in their stages makes this even better. There's a part in the choreo where a backup dancer comes in on a literal scooter, like they just go right across the stage. And it's so random, but I also found that very funny at the same time. I was confused at first, but then I was like, you know what, that's the point of this song, you just gotta go with the flow. The random shouting they have in there might be annoying in a different song, but on a live stage like the ones I was watching, it fits in. Overall, this is a 7 out of 10 because I like the performances and concept, even if the song itself is not my favorite. I think the reason I enjoyed this so much was because it wasn't what I expected. The strings she has are so calming, but they really do add to the mysterious vibe, and Yuju sounded absolutely great here. The high note she has in the bridge is just amazing. I was afraid they were going to go overboard with the concept and the dance, but watching the stages, it fits the song perfectly. I liked how in the stages, she doesn't sing every note, she only holds the mic to her face if she's actually singing. It really adds to the calm and mysterious feeling of the performances. I don't think I would listen to this on its own because it's not the type of music I usually like, but everything in this comeback comes together to make some really enjoyable stages. I was really curious as to how her solo debut would turn out, and I'm happy to say it was great especially considering this is unlike anything G-Friend has released. I think she can really build on her solo career from here. I'm definitely more interested in her because of this. This gets an 8 out of 10. Everything about the music really entices me to watch the stages and listen to the album, so that's a win in my book. <laughs> Whose bright idea was it to have both Huyen and Moonbyul come back within the same month? As a fan of both of them, I certainly enjoyed the content, but I do fear for their sales and hopeful music show wins. That being said, I did like this a little more than Huyen's song, but it wasn't as good as her debut with Eclipse. This song is a little fun ride with a lot of Moonbyul vocals, which is always fun to hear because for those unaware, she is a main rapper. While it's nothing like what she released before, I still enjoy it. The instrumental is cute, and I like that it ramps up at the end so that the last chorus feels like a party. The other parts of this comeback feel just a tad random, like I'm not sure the concept and everything match the song, 
but I did like the storyline of the music video and how they incorporated that same storyline into most of the stages with the dance and the props. The entire thing doesn't really feel like Moonbyul, but then again, is it really for me to decide what fits her and what doesn't? I should just lean back and enjoy the song while it lasts. This gets a 7.5 out of 10, it's still pretty good and fun all around. This is painful in more ways than one, mainly because Nature is a group that I'd liked ever since their debut, and to see the song and dance and everything here happening to them, it just hurts. First of all, this song is terrible. It sounds messy, but like not in a good way. The only part that I liked was the bridge, but as soon as that was over, they were back to the chanting and the annoying instrumental that you just can't ignore. The thing is, I feel like this song could go great with a quirky concept, especially since it reminds me of a lot of second gen quirky concepts, but instead of that, they chose to go with… well, basically their concept is cultural appropriation. I don't really feel qualified to comment on that situation since I'm not part of the affected groups, but I think if you watch the music video for yourself, you can spot some of the things with their makeup and their dance. It's also unfortunate because they've been filming this docuseries called Nature Can't Go On Like This, that's like not the exact title but that's like the English translation, and basically that thing is about them having no money and like they just film them going around and trying to prepare this comeback while also not having any money, and basically that whole docuseries makes this comeback feel like their last shot. But the fact that this is what they came up with is just sad. I'll give it, okay, you guys are not gonna want to hear this, but I'll give this a 1 out of 10. Listening to this a couple times for the review was more than enough for me to decide that I don't like it, and that's a little sad considering nature's history, but it's just how it is. It got me feeling like... I'll be honest, it was kind of hard to come up with my thoughts on this release because it felt very nondescript. It's like, is there, there's a beat drop there somewhere, but is it really enough to count as one? It's not loud, but it's not like quiet either, it's just entirely average. I think they had some good jazzy sounding instrumental in the bridge, but other than that, there wasn't anything interesting happening. The stuff they put behind the rap was actually kind of annoying. And then the concept is basically a museum concept, which Up Tension already did earlier this month, so that wasn't special either. It feels like every board group this month is designed to do a museum concept where they wear suits, so I don't know what's going on there, but maybe boy groups should work on that. I did like the suits they had on, though I will say every boy group is doing suits, but some boy groups do it better than others, and Pentagon is one of them. The suits and the dance were definitely the best parts of this comeback. I think Pentagon makes songs that their fans will like, but I don't see how this will attract new fans because they aren't really doing anything special. I think they made a song that is pleasant enough to not turn off if it came on shuffle, but it isn't good enough that I would seek it out and play it on purpose. In true average fashion, I will give it a 5 out of 10. I like a lot of Pentagon stuff, like everybody remembers Shine, right? So I don't think that this song in particular is indicative of my feelings about their releases as a whole. And that concludes January's review. Both the best and the worst songs this month came from girl groups, with WJSN Chocomi having the best and Nature having the worst. That was a pretty big surprise, especially because I waited all the way until the end of the month to see what Nature would do, and they came up with that crap show. <laughs> But on the bright side, boy groups came in surprisingly strong this month. I'd love to see how you guys feel about these releases, so comment them down below. If there are any songs you think I missed, comment those too, and I might review them in a pinned comment or a community post. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!